Okay, so we've made it to the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So there's a condition up here. It says if uh, big F prime of X, so the derivative of big F of X is equal to little f of X, then we have this result that the definite integral of little f of X is equal to uh, the big F of X evaluated at B minus big F of X evaluated at A. Or in other words, big F of B minus big F of A. So this is kind of a curious result. Um, also, we need little f of x to be continuous. Uh, this one here, I didn't say that because I just didn't feel like writing it on the screen and cluttering the screen up. Okay, so what's going on? Well, first things first, um, the fact that uh, the derivative of big F is equal to little f means that little f, or, or sorry, that big F is any antiderivative of little f. So let's put that into perspective a little bit. So we've taken antiderivatives before. Let's take an easy one. Let's say the antiderivative of 2x. Well, this is equal to uh, x squared plus c. So this is the entire family of functions whose derivative is 2x. The condition here says that we can take any function whose derivative is 2x. So that means uh, when we choose our big F, we're allowed to choose any one of these from the fam uh, any x squared plus any constant we want. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to always choose 0 because that's the easiest. So this will just end up being, when we take our uh, definite integral, this will end up being just x squared. And you'll see what I mean, and you'll see why in just a moment. So why don't we do that? Why don't we turn this into uh, a definite integral? So let's take the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x dx. Well, this is saying, OK, little f, let me write this over here on the side, um, maybe above, maybe below, sorry little f is equal to 2x. We need to find a function whose derivative is 2x, which is the exact same thing as saying a function, uh, uh, an antiderivative of 2x. So we just did that. I erased it, but we just did that. That's x squared. And let's see what happens if we just keep the constant. So let's not choose it to be 0. Let's keep it as a constant. So this is, so now we, we found big F. So big F we're saying is equal to x squared plus c. And you can always check this. Just take the derivative of big F and you'll get back to little f. OK. So we've done that. We found our, our antiderivative. And now what we need to do is evaluate this uh, at 0 and 2. So this vertical bar notation is used to remind us that we're not done. We need to plug some numbers in. So since big F is just this, uh, this x squared plus c, it's just that function, we know how to plug 2 in. Just like the definition says, plug in the upper limit to big F. So that's going to be 2 squared. It's going to go in for x uh, plus c. So that's what happens when we plug in 2. So in other words, this right here is big F of 2. And then we're going to subtract what happens when we plug in 0. So that's 0 squared plus c. And just to be really clear, that's minus big F of 0. And what does this come out to be? Well, this stays, uh, or that becomes 4, 2 squared, plus c. And this just becomes minus c. And it's clear that the c's cancel, and we're just left with 4. So this is equal to 4. This antiderivative, or sorry, 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 this definite integral um, is equal to 4. And all we did to, to find the definite integral is we plugged in the uh, 2 
uh, we plugged in the upper limit of the integral into the antiderivative and we subtracted the when, what happened when we plugged the lower limit into the into the antiderivative and you notice that this that the c's cancel that's why we can always choose c to be zero it just makes it easier we don't have to worry about it so in the future we won't even worry about those c's when we're doing a definite integral okay this is a pretty uh, amazing result let's take a look at at the significance here um so let me take a draw a graph really quickly when we were finding area before, it used to be that we had to go through this really laborious process of, of uh, finding all these rectangles and taking a limit. Um, now we don't have to do any of that, according to, to the fundamental theorem of calculus. This example is a little bit easier even than taking rectangles, and so it's going to be easier to determine whether or not we're kind of in the ballpark of, of what we're trying to find. We're trying to find or what this should be telling us is the area under the graph of 2x. Because remember from the last video, this definite integral is really just a Riemann sum. And the Riemann sum is telling us the area under the, under the curve. So it should be telling us this area here as x goes from, from 0 to 2. Those are the limits of integration. That's where x is ranging. Um, this area should be equal to 4. That's what we found. So we know that this graph is 2x. We know that the height of this function when x is 2 is 4. So this triangle has a height of 4, a base of 2. Its area should be 1 half the base, which is 2, times the height, which is 4. And that's clearly equal to 4. So, so far, it seems like we're, this area is 4. It seems like we're, we're, in the right ballpark. This definite integral, when we evaluated it the way we wanted to, gave us the, the area under the graph of 2x um, as x goes from 0 to 2. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look at another example. We'll do one more example and then uh, we'll do more examples in the next few videos. So let's bring back the fundamental theorem so we can see it as we're going along. Let's see what happens if we try and find the uh, definite integral from 1 to 2 of x squared. Okay, well, we're going to uh, find an antiderivative. So maybe we can, even since this is the first video, we'll write these steps out. Little f is x squared. So we're trying to find an antiderivative. We're trying to find big F. And this turns out to be x cubed over 3. And if you don't believe me, take the derivative of x cubed over 3. You'll get the power rule. Uh, the 3 comes down. Those cancel. You're left with x squared. We already talked about why we can choose c to be 0, so we won't even worry about it. Uh, and so this is going to be x cubed over 3. And since we're doing a definite integral, we still have to evaluate it at 1 and 2. So this is equal to 2 cubed over 3 minus 1 cubed over 3. Um, and I'll even write this out again. This is f of the uh, big F of 2. So this is the antiderivative after we plug 2 in minus the antiderivative after we plugged 1 in. And uh, let's see, 2 cubed, that's 8. So this is 8 thirds minus 1 third, which is 7 thirds. So the area under the graph of x squared, as x goes from 1 to 2, is 7 thirds. Um, and that's kind of neat. One thing to notice before we go is that the, the definite integral gives you a number. It gives you a real number, whereas antiderivatives give you a family of functions. So the true antiderivative of x squared is uh, x cubed over 3 plus c. So that would be the antiderivative. Uh, that's a family of functions. The definite integral gives you a real number. So uh, uh, 
a definite, a definite distinction to be aware of. Okay, see you in the next video.